Right then troops, welcome back. It's been a while, uh, but it's not because I haven't been busy. What I'm busy with at the moment is just going through the expedition kit list every year apart from last year for obvious reasons. I go on a little expedition with a few good friends and uh, we go quite a long distance away and we live in a wood for a week and we get up to uh, all sorts of daft things. And over the years we've devised this kit list and it's just so as we don't forget anything critical so you're not wasting time there going out and tracking down things that you critical things that you forgot. We don't take everything on it. Some things that are not on it we do take. And for those that are interested, I'll flash a copy of this up at the end. It's a while off yet, but you've got to start preparing because you don't know if you can't find anything and you might have to buy something and it, it's not good being in a rush, is it? So at the moment I'm just going through communications gear and first aid gear. Communications gear, we use CB radios a lot. They used to, CB used to be heavily used and it used to be difficult to, to communicate because you'd get lots of, uh, 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 well basically idiots on it, but nowadays it's, it's, quite, uh, it's quite a useful means of communication. So we use them both handhelds for walking around and going down there, it's quite a long distance, we, we have a CB in the, in the vehicle. So I might go through that on a separate video because it is quite, it's quite interesting and it's quite useful. It's alright having your mobile phone isn't it, but uh, mobile phone, you, you're relying on a lot of other things to work. The other thing I'm looking at at the moment is first aid. Now, on a big expedition I generally take the expedition first aid kit, but uh, I'm going to be a bit tight for space and weight this year because I'm taking the dog with me. So I'll be taking the dog's first aid kit, which I used three days ago to take a thorn out of a foot which I couldn't get out with my finger and thumb nail because it was in too deep but I did manage to get it out with the tweezers in there and I've also taken five ticks off of this week already so it's uh, starting to look like another tremendous tick season but the other first aid kit I'll take will be an amalgamation of these three and the one in the uh, the one in the vehicle already uh, as the as the camp first aid kit. We're never that, in the UK you're never that far away from civilization so it's just first aid it's not uh, surgery or anything. Anyway so that's just what I'm looking at at the moment but I'm going up to meet with some of the guys now uh, uh, at Manticore Knives place. Uh, he's a good friend, he has always been with us, uh, is a blacksmith, a knife smith and a master of many other trades as well so he's, he's, he's a really good guy to be going out bushcrafting with. So I'm going to put a bit of that on uh, after, after I've finished waffling here and hopefully you'll be interested in that because what's the most important tool to take outdoors with you. Of course it's your knife, your bushcraft knife. He makes the knives, not only does he make the knives but he makes the tools for making the knives as well. So uh, hopefully I might get a little bit of that on. So I'll leave the waffling for there then. Um, as I say I'll come back to you with this if you're interested in the sort of stuff we think about taking with us on an expedition. And then I might come back with a few more little videos on some of the aspects and some of the gear we take with us. For example, properly setting up a CB radio in your vehicle or something which I want to practice as well. 
with my compass a little bit of compass work because it's not quite so simple as you point the red needle and that tells you where north is. It's just not quite as simple as that. A uh, few little things you need to know. Uh, I also in charge of the electrics as well, uh, solar panels and stuff. I might cover that, you might not be interested in that. Uh, some of the tools we take, tools. If there's one thing you really want when you're out in the outdoors, it's tools. It's just how much can you carry with you? Well, we're going, you know, we're going in vehicles. We will have a base camp where we'll have all our gear with us at the base camp. So we can take quite a lot of stuff with us. We do take a lot of stuff with us, but then we can, we can go out from base camp on little tiny expeditions and wanderings and things. But mainly it's about bushcraft, bushcrafting at base camp mainly. Uh, well, mainly it's about having a good laugh mainly. So anyway, right, I'll leave the waffling bit here and uh, I'll catch you uh, a bit later on. We're running. Hang on, I need, I need a wider frame. Tell them when you're ready. Right, we're ready. It's outstanding. I haven't put pictures of this one online yet, um, so that's still yeah, still not an advertised model yet. What's the benefit of? Um, because when you're doing like sort of your, your back edges and things like that, if you tilt to the side and you've got your tool shelf in there, um, the same as with doing your wood, is you'd be able to gain a 90 degree profile to your mm. knives all the way around, which is easier yeah, than yeah, doing yeah. it off a belt. Yeah, yeah. it travels yeah. down all the way. Yeah, it's fine, but pretty flat yeah. on the back. Yeah. yeah. Do you have something behind then to support the belt? Yes, yeah. So there'd be a platen similar to this, the metal plate. Ah, right, okay. Um, then. Ah, which goes yeah. in and out. That yeah. one, at the present moment, is um, doesn't have it on it's still under the bench there yeah, okay but uh, you can use it without that for doing more of your convex edges yeah, so yeah. the belt gives a bit as you push in yeah um which you, you could use that on anything like boy now some people use the top bit anyway yeah um but uh, i normally wouldn't use obviously this is just a quick demonstration for the for the video but i normally wouldn't use an aluminium oxide belt for grinding the metal I'd normally use one of the blue ones or the yellow ones, the Trizax. Um, oh, they're, that... much, uh, they're much stronger, they give you a much better, crisper. What the other ones? Yeah. Oh, okay. So you've got like your 2500 mil ceramics, um, which obviously go on with big um, beta belt grinder, <coughs> your 2x72s, um, and then 2x60s. So you've got your zirconiums, which are blue. Yeah. Which I would use for putting, like, the, removing the most meat for putting yeah. the, the main bevels on, and then you've got your yellows, 
your oxides um, and sort of just smoothing all the lines out that are created by the yeah. zirconiums yeah. and then normally I'd use the, the red aluminium oxides for doing the wood because it yeah, uh, yeah. does quite a decent job on the wood yeah. but, mm -hmm. um, but yeah. I see I understand yeah, I broke a little lid then Get in and melt. There you go. Right, so that was just a quick trip up to Paul's of Manticore Knives and uh, I'm not trying to sell his gear, um, he could sell his own gear but I will leave a link to his website for anybody who's interested uh, in the UK in knife making equipment and knives. Uh, I'll just leave you with one last thing then which is just the kit list for anybody who's interested in that sort of thing because I am interested in other people's kit lists, what people find useful and what people don't find useful. Uh, we're all just learning aren't we? So no doubt before we get off on our expedition you'll uh, see a, a bit of this stuff in action as I'm just, just, uh, just checking some of it out, particularly the, the compass and a, a little bit of map work and maybe a little bit of first aid as well. Right, I'll leave it there then. Uh, they all tend to drag on a bit too long really, don't they? Right, I'll catch you on the next one then.